This lesson is about the ability of an inductor, a coil, to produce infinite voltage and for a capacitor the ability to produce a infinite current. In lesson one we talked about the dielectric field and the magnetic field as the components of the electric field. In lesson two we talked about power is needed to produce the electric energy stored in the fields. This is lesson three. We're going to talk about infinite voltage and infinite current. And this is the book again where I'll be quoting from. The voltage E is induced by the rate of change of the magnetism. The rate of change implies a time factor. If the time factor is short, the magnetic field strength is decreasing rapidly and the amount of voltage that is produced is higher. If a coil has inductance, the, the ability to store magnetic energy in its magnetic field, that means a high inductance, then the transient is longer because it takes more time to transform back into the dielectric field and produce a voltage. But on the other hand, and this is very interesting, he says, the higher the resistance R, the shorter is the duration of the transient. On page 27, Steinmetz writes, if resistance is infinite, that is, infinite resistance is in shunt to the coil, or in other words, the circuit is simply opened. If the opening were instantaneously, there would be an infinite voltage. And that is mighty interesting, I think. So if we have a magnetic circuit, a coil with a current going through it, it produces a magnetic field and we open the circuit very quickly, an infinite voltage is produced by the magnetic field transforming instantly into a dielectric field. The time factor is zero. Of course, this is in theory. In practice, it's always a little bit different, but it's a very interesting quote that you can produce an infinite voltage by opening the circuit of a coil that has a current running through it. Today we have MOSFETs and MOSFETs can switch very fast and they have very low on resistance. If we use a MOSFET as a switch, the resistance is very low when it's on, but when it's opened, the resistance is very large and the switching time is also near zero and near zero is around 25 nanoseconds. In his book, Charles Proteus Steinmetz repeats himself constantly. Steinmetz says the, the circuits are analogous. That means that a capacitor can do the reverse. And if we follow his logic, then a charged capacitor that is presented with a zero resistance, a infinite current is induced because the time factor is again zero. So with today's technology, you can make use of these statements and use them for the bifilar coil. Because if we put a DC current on this coil, it produces a magnetic field. And if we use a MOSFET to open the circuit, the magnetic field is transformed into a voltage. Today we call this back EMF. And this back EMF is fairly high. It can produce several hundreds of volts from a 12 volt current. Today we have another component that's a fast diode. And this fast diode can switch extremely fast and this makes it possible to store the back EMF 
of a magnetic field into a capacitor. We use a current to produce the magnetic field and when we open the switch the magnetic field energy, the electric energy stored in its field is transformed back into a voltage that can be stored in a capacitor as a dielectric field. So no energy is really wasted. Almost all energy goes to the capacitor. On the other hand, this same capacitor can be discharged through a bifile coil. And again, if we use a MOSFET, we can switch really fast and with very low on resistance and then the capacitor discharge into the coil induces a current. And these two processes can be combined within the same system, which implies that we can reuse, recycle the electric energy with a single bifilar coil. And I, I looked if I could make it resonant by discharging a capacitor straight into it. And yes, it can. So I found out that you can induce resonance into a bifilar coil on two separate ways. One is via the magnetic field. The change of the magnetic field induces a voltage in the resonant coil and becomes resonant. And the other way is by discharging a capacitor. And so we have got two kinds of ways that we can induce resonance in a coil. And since it's the same energy, this means we've got an increase of energy in the resonant coil, but we're still using the same energy. So it's very, very efficient. Think about these concepts and what this implies, what you can do with this. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something. Please share if you care and subscribe if you want to learn more because I will do more of these lectures about the electric field and electric power as seen by Steinmetz.